Recently, in one school in our district, a teacher questioned students about how tests were administered more than one year earlier by a particular teacher. This inquiring teacher was ignorant how difficult it would be for children to accurately distinguish between over 60 documented practice tests and the actual test administered more than a year earlier by the teacher whose conduct was being called into question. Teacher behavior that would be improper during an actual test is the same conduct that is permitted and even encouraged during practice sessions. The self-appointed teacher investigator most likely has never administered a state assessment during the duration of that teacher's career in this program. Disturbingly, that self-appointed teacher, inspired by rumor and that teacher's own belief not based on any personal knowledge or wrongdoings, tape recorded portions of the teacher's conversation with those students without permission from any parent from anyone. And that shocks me as a parent, as a teacher, and as a person. Did it shock you? That recording became the proof that started a disciplinary proceeding against the teacher suspected of cheating. On the recommendation of the then superintendent, charges were filed. Suspect of cheating, the teacher's job, and ability to ever teach again were threatened. The district helped select an arbitrator after six days of evidence and hearings. When and where the district was represented by its own attorney, paid with valuable tax dollar, the arbitrator carefully reasoned that none of the believable evidence supported any of the charges made by the district and dismissed all, all of the charges against the teacher. That same teacher, now exonerated, remains removed from the classroom, having been removed from the classroom less than 24 hours before that teacher was to testify, before the arbitrator, supposedly because the district had initiated a new investigation. Any ordinary person might wonder, was it to ratchet up the pressure to crack that teacher's resolve and ability to defend him or herself? If so, how devious, how unfair, how outrageous a misuse of power. The investigation centered on new rumors. The teacher had scared some students. Parents were upset. Of course, the same teacher had already been proven a cheater in the court of public opinion, where rumor displaces truth and irrational beliefs displace justice. If a student was anxious or frightened, if a parent was upset, I question why was the teacher removed from the classroom before an administrator met with that teacher? and that upset parent to inquire, to learn the truth, to fashion a resolution benefiting the students. This is how principals in our district used to conduct themselves. Today, that search for truth, fairness, and enlightened conflict resolution is history. No longer operating standard operating procedure. When did this new investigation begin? It began after the falseness of the then pending charges became more and more apparent to the school administration. As they learned what proof could be and had actually been presented to the arbitrator, stripped of rumor and irrational suspicion. The new investigation appears to be how a compulsive gambler doubles down on a bet to offset a previous loss. Decisions about a teacher should not be made in this manner. Our community deserves better. Our community is better than that. I have seen many teachers over the year, some excellent, some good, some poor. The teacher targeted today is an excellent teacher. Students need to learn to think critically, not to depend only on repeating what they are told. They must learn to distinguish truth from fiction. Fiction. Adults also require these skills. The accused teacher had been paid extra by the district to teach outside of the regular school hours at the district's academy, providing instruction to students having difficulty performing well on standardized tests, even while the charges are cheating. 
sense dismissed by the arbitrator, were then pending. Why would a school administrator hire a teacher believed to be a cheater rather than to leave the academy position vacant? After all, people cheat to hide their incompetence. Why hire a teacher believed to be both incompetent and a cheater? On the other hand, if the teacher in question was, as I believe, an excellent, competent teacher, would that teacher's test results be in part the product of the teacher's skill rather than the product of the teacher? The district has given the teacher, suspected of cheating, the highest teacher evaluation rating even after they concluded that the teacher was a cheater, right before the formal charges were filed. That apparent lack of logical and coherent thought exhibited by the school administration is beyond my capacity of understanding. Do the district administrators believe that the students of East Rockaway cannot succeed without the benefit of cheating? I hope not. This board is charged with great responsibilities before you ratify new charges against the teacher already exonerated from the charges of cheating, I respectfully request that you do your own homework. Do not continue to rely on others to make such important decisions. Remember the recommendations to bring the now dismissed charges proves that you received poor counsel the first time around. Be wary of investigations that work backwards to rationalize a goal reached before the investigation is completed. Be wary of investigations that exclude facts that inconveniently disprove the suspected charges. Be wary of personal agendas of individuals making accusations or recommending disciplinary actions. Do not continue to empower those who have misused the power that, they have, that you have delegated to them. Rumor, irrational suspicion, and personal agendas do not serve our children or our community. Use tax dollars to benefit the children, not to continue wasting them on new legal fees to be added to those already spent in bringing the now dismissed charges to cheating. The community should demand to know how many dollars were expended on this endeavor. I suspect many, many tens of thousands of dollars, perhaps a hundred thousand dollars or more. Do not ratify poor decisions and hold accountable those that recommend such poor and decisive decisions. Every child and every adult needs to learn from their mistakes. Our children and our community depend on you to exercise your independent judgment in a sound and mature way. I have faith. I have faith that you will do so. Perhaps the school board has been misled about topics that extended beyond one teacher's exoneration from the false accusations of cheating. Perhaps the school board's thinking about the teacher in question is influenced by other topics. Was anyone else accused by the district of cheating on tests? Were these other accusations resolved by an agreement approved by this board in executive session? on the recommendation of school administration and the school district's attorney. Did any other teacher pay a substantial fine and suffer other restrictions on that other teacher's ability to perform non-teaching tasks for the district? And if so, did that teacher agree to admit improper behavior out of fear, out of fear of losing an arbitration proceeding despite his or her own innocence? I don't know the answer to these questions, but changes in behavior are apparent even as that I have posed. The teacher, now under the cloud of a new investigation, successfully defended him or herself against the charges of cheating. That teacher courageously sought and obtained justice, and that teacher's innocence has been vindicated before the arbitrator. Let us return to when false rumors, irrational suspicions, and misguided personal agendas had no place in fashioning our decisions as educators. Do not be guided by those who promote false rumor, irrational fear, and mass hysteria to advance any improper personal agendas. 
let an excellent teacher, now exonerated for false charges, return to the classroom where that teacher belongs. Make your community proud of you. Enable your community to be proud of itself. I hand you six copies of the text of my comments for your convenience, one for each board member and one for the district clerk's records. I ask that it be included in the record of this public <coughs> session of the school board. Thank you for letting me have this time, Jane.